on music therapy in the metaverse. Uh, first, a little bit about me. Again, my name is Julian Brill. I'm a board certified music therapist and also a VR developer developing different applications and, and clinical tools to augment existing clinical uh, music therapy. And I'm also the founder of Music VR, which is dedicated to research and the development of, of those applications and discovering ways to augment music therapy using virtual reality. So first I wanted to discuss a few takeaways that I hope everyone gets as a part of this presentation. First, what is music therapy? Being able to define uh, what music therapy is and what it looks like. Uh, second, why VR? Why, why are we talking about virtual reality and the metaverse when it comes to music, music and wellness, music and, and music therapy? And third, uh, understanding you know potential research and, and clinical uses and, and why that's important and why that's really uh, an extremely exciting opportunity going forward as, as the technology gets better and as we understand a little bit better uh, on you know how VR uh, affects us and, and ways that it can be used to, to help. So point number one, what, what is music therapy? Uh, music therapy is the, the use of music for non-musical goals. And what that means is using music in a number of different ways, including playing music, listening to music, composing music, and either passively or actively using music to affect positive change in domains that are non-musical. So what are, what are those domains? I think the most obvious one is emotional. I think we all use music uh, to an extent uh, therapeutically, whether we're having a, you know having a rough day or maybe we're feeling stressed out or anxious. Uh, I, a pretty typical thing to do is to to put on some music, um, you know, put in your your AirPods and and listen in a, in a quiet space and just kind of relax and. Music is, has been used like that for, for thousands of years. And even from the, the earliest recorded history of you know, the creation of instruments or creation of you know, written music, um, music obviously has a very ritualistic purpose in, in our history, but it also has uh, the entertainment side, which is also for, for relaxation, for, for wellness, really. Um, so what does that look like? Uh, well, in terms of domains that, that can be used for music therapy, uh, there's uh, fine and gross motor for physical needs. Uh, there's speech. There is emotional, behavioral, cognitive, um, all these different ways that, that music can affect us. And largely because music has such a, a profound effect on how we operate, which is through our, our brain. And in fact, music is one of the few things that can affect the entire brain at, at any given time because it calls upon so many different aspects of how we interact with the world. Um, in terms of uh, some, some really interesting points or important points rather to, to what music therapy is, it's, it's evidence-based first off. It is very reliant upon research in, in the scientific method, um, documenting that research and, and building upon that research to improve upon existing methods. Uh, so it's very important to know that it's, uh, it's evidence-based, first off. Second, it, it's goal-oriented. It's very focused on providing a, a positive change purposefully on a, on a specific goal. And so if you were to, to have a, a person that you're working with as a music therapist, you would assess their needs and you would build a, a, a program, a music therapy program to, to benefit them within that specific need. And during that, that process, you would document that um, to, to keep track of any, any change that happens. If something doesn't quite happen as you would hope, you make an adjustment. Um, so it's very important, again, to, to keep that goal in, in, in mind. And, and last, but probably the most important, uh, it's, it's person-centered. And what I mean by that is that 
you know, it's not a, a one shoe fits fits everybody situation. Everybody has very specific uh, music preferences um, and obviously very specific needs because we're, we're, we're very complex individuals. And so it's important to know that, that what might work for one person doesn't necessarily work for the next person. But there are some uh, underlying aspects to, to how music operates and how we uh, relate to music that is, is quite nearly universal. And one of the big parts of music that's very important is, is rhythm. Um, and what I mean by rhythm is really the, the structure, the structure of, of beats. Um, so if you had a, a very basic tempo, there's a structure to that in terms of how much time is between those intervals. Um, you know, how loud you, you play those, those clicks. And so the structure of that sound is very important to how we, we relate to it and how we process it. And mainly because our, our brain loves structure in a lot of different ways. And we, we find patterns in, in places where there aren't patterns, but when there are patterns, we really, our brains really like it a lot. And part of why, why rhythm is important is because of mainly neuroplasticity. And what neuroplasticity is, is the brain's ability to rewire itself, to create new connections between neurons and to strengthen those connections through, through repetition. And if you've ever, you know, learned an instrument, how you were at the beginning of learning that instrument, and if you practiced enough, through repetition, you, you got better. And a part of that is, is obviously learning and, and neuroplasticity, but um, a key component, at least within music therapy, is the rhythmic aspect of it. And if you can time it, what you're really timing is sensory input. And within music, you, you can sort of touch upon other senses that are outside of, of sound, uh, but sound is your, your main tool. and when that becomes synchronized and the neurons fire at certain times, you can create that neuroplasticity, um, largely through the use of dopamine, uh, which is very important to, to that uh, restructuring, to that neuroplasticity. It sort of primes the, the brain's ability to do that. And a big um, creator of dopamine is listening to music. But why, why VR? And what does the metaverse have to do with that? Well, to me, virtual reality provides control. And it provides control in a number of different ways. First off, if you're in virtual reality, um, you have a lot more control than if you're watching a movie. Uh, you have a lot more control than if you were watching strangers outside. You, you have a, a control over the environment that you wouldn't normally have. And you can control it in ways that aren't typically possible in reality. On the flip side of that, if you are a music therapist, especially if you are able to develop uh, and program the experiences uh, for, for a, a client or whomever you're working with, that control can then be used to create an experience that heavily synchronized to the musical goals that, that you're focusing on. So what does, that, what does that look like? Well, for instance, let's say you were working on an improvisation. So someone is working on self-expression and they're improvising uh, musically as a part of uh, that goal for self-expression, which is really you know, another way to, to communicate, which is through music. Um, but let's say they're doing it in VR. So not only do they have the, the auditory feedback that they would normally get if they were, uh, you know, performing on chimes in real life, but you could provide uh, a haptic feedback, which you would get in reality. That's true. Um, but you can strengthen that. You can control that a little bit more than you would uh, in reality. But you can connect visual feedback or color feedback or spatial feedback with 
the auditory feedback. And you can do it in a way that is congruent with the exact goal that you're working on. So music, as I said earlier, is, is one of the few things that can really affect the entire brain. And it's, again, it's, it's a network. So everything is interconnected. For example, if you are ever listening to music and you had a, a, a memory pop into your head and you get that, not only the, the visual of that memory perhaps, but the feel of it, you get an emotional memory along with that. And all because you, you listen to, to music that you may have listened to at that time. Um, so again, the music is being listened and heard through the auditory cortex. It's analyzed. It runs in through uh, uh, the amygdala and the hippocampus, which are very close together and, and affect each other greatly. And you, you get that memory that sparks that emotion, which spreads that dopamine. And it's all interconnected in a way that it's, it's very real because you're experiencing that, that same feeling again. And let's say you, you had that experience of listening to the music, but it brought you back to a vacation you took or a place that you had been to. Only you could actually be in that location because you were in VR. So again, it, it's, it's a very strengthening idea. And why is that? Why even try to do this? Well, VR uh, therapy in the past, especially through research done with, with burn victims um, or, or individuals with uh, anxiety, uh, they found that, that the addition of VR can improve upon the results of the same therapy without VR. And I think partly because of this ability to tap into these additional sensory inputs. So what does that mean for, for the metaverse and what does that provide? Well, I view uh, quickly a, a three-pronged potential. Uh, the first being research, because I think uh, due to the electronic and, and computerized nature of, of VR, you have a really awesome opportunity to record a lot of data. And because a lot of data is coming through the headset uh, within VR, and that's, that's all there ready to go. Two, clinically, I, I think there's a great potential for improving upon the already existing goals. And then third, the, the social aspect, the metaverse aspect. So imagine being able to hop into a headset and going to a virtual group music therapy session from indiv with individuals from around the globe um, and, and being able to uh, experience that uh, in the safety of your, your home. Maybe you're unable to, to leave your home. Uh, so I think the metaverse really provides a lot of potential for that. And part of that potential that I'm working on is uh, working through uh, the, the social platform Horizon Worlds and creating a, a music adventure theme park. Uh, and a part of that theme park is a, a social forum where uh, group events, group music therapy will be taking place in the very near future. And being able to connect to individuals in that way, uh, having a, a virtual space to um, you know, interact musically with others, to communicate musically with others, but not only with individuals that you would you know, walk out your front door and, and interact with, but with individuals who have a very um, rich and, and vastly different musical cultural background than yourself. If you ever get a, a chance to, to check that out, then the, the, the link is there for you. But um, a lot of really cool uh, potential with that. So with that, I, I thank you for, for listening. And uh, I'm really excited for uh, what lies ahead for, for, for music and wellness, for music therapy, and, and what VR and the metaverse can do for that. So thank you.